What is up, folks? I am Kevin Ioli. Thank you for joining me. Canelo Alvarez has another one in the books. He has another eight-figure payday, another victory, another overwhelming win against an outmatched opponent. This time it was Edgar Berlanga who went down to defeat at the hands of the great Mexican champion, who I want to say right up front is one of the greatest fighters I have ever covered. I have covered boxing for a long time, and Alvarez is right there at the top. He is a fantastic fighter. He does so many good things well, and he has an amazing resume. So Canelo Alvarez is deserving of all the accolades he has gotten over his career. However, and there's always a but in these things, he has really taken the easy path recently. The last year has really been disappointing for Alvarez. September 30th of last year, he defeats super welterweight champion Jermel Charlo. Charlo didn't even try, basically, in the fight. Then he fights Jaime Munguia, who moved up from middleweight to super middleweight. Um, Munguia was undefeated. Um, not a lot of people gave him much of a chance against Alvarez, and, and he did not win that. Alvarez kind of looked like he carried him over the last few rounds, and Alvarez wins a unanimous decision. And that brings us to Saturday, where he fights Edgar Berlanga in a fight that nobody, nobody wanted to see. There was nobody calling for Alvarez to fight Edgar Berlanga. Berlanga was 22-0 with 17 knockouts going into the fight. But look, we know who he fought and how he built that record. It's an age-old trick in boxing. You get a young prospect, you match him easy on the way up, and if you have a good matchmaker, they challenge the young fighter, and they put you in these fights where, yeah, you're expected to win, but you learn certain things. But Berlanga started to reel off some first-round knockouts early in his career, and really what happened was that halted him kind of getting these more difficult opponents. And so he just fought tomato can after tomato can after tomato can, and he wins his first 16 pro fights by first-round knockout. That got him notoriety. That probably put him on Alvarez's, or excuse, on Canelo's radar, and that you know got him the fight on Saturday. But he certainly wasn't ready for that fight. Now, let's give him credit. He fought hard. He survived a third-round knockdown. And I, I say, hey, you know what? God bless him. You know, he made it to the finish line. He's going to get another big fight right now. But Alvarez won 10 rounds on two judges' scorecards. He won nine rounds on the other. And I think it's about time he challenges himself against somebody who might beat him, right? If you want to get paid $30, $40, 50000000 million for these fights, and you want to charge $300 just to get in, or $100, nearly $100, it was a $90 pay-per-view last night, to watch the fight, you have to give something to get something. And Alvarez is taking, he is taking the money, he is, and he's giving us lousy fights. He's giving us fights against people nobody wants to see. And that is my criticism of Canelo Alvarez now. He is a guy that I had defended so many times in his career. He fought a lot of opponents that he didn't have to fight, of course, starting with Floyd Mayweather in 2013. Much credit to him for doing that. He wasn't nearly ready for somebody as complex and as smart and as shrewd as Floyd Mayweather. But he had a lot of heart. He believed in himself, and he went out there, and he fought hard against Mayweather. Mayweather won the fight, but I think Alvarez showed people he was going to be a superstar as well. Uh, he came back, and he fought Arizlandi Lara, who happened to fight on the undercard last night in the co-main event. Um Alvarez took a lot of fights in his career that he didn't have to take, and he's fought a lot of quality, high-level opponents. But recently, it's really been disappointingly light. As I mentioned, the last three opponents, Jermel Charlo, Jaime Munguia, and Edgar Berlanga, and just really did not like to see any of those three get those fights, especially when you had some logical opponents out there. He could have rematched Dimitri Bivol, who he lost to in 2022 in a light heavyweight title fight. Um, he could have fought David Benavides. He could have fought Terrence Crawford. Those were fights that the public would have been 
excited to see. Those would have been fights that it was fair to charge those kind of prices for. Um, they would have meant something. They would have proved something. But fighting Edgar Berlanga proved nothing other than that Canelo knows how to make money. And I suppose, you know, boxing is a dangerous game, and I understand um, that that you want to get everything out of it that you possibly can. I, I have no problem with Alvarez making a lot of money for that because these fighters all take risks and they put their lives and their bodies on the line when they step between the ropes to fight. So I have no problem with him making money, but you also have to give something to get something, and he's not giving right now. That is what's really disappointing in, in what's going on here. Um, Canelo does not get along very well with Oscar De La Hoya, and the Golden Boy uh, was one of the great fighters of his generation. He promoted Alvarez for much of his career until they had a falling out a few years ago. And look, I am with Canelo on understanding why he didn't want to work with Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar's kind of gotten a little zany. But if you look at Oscar as a fighter, strictly as a fighter and nothing outside of the ring, there were few like Oscar. Oscar fought everybody, and he fought fights all the time that he didn't have to take. And he did a couple of things that I think that Canelo would be wise to pay attention to. Like, I think he would take fights, lesser fights occasionally, but he wouldn't put those on pay-per-view. He would fight on HBO so the public could see him, and it would build his pay-per-view fight up. Toward the end of his career, he fought Steve Forbes. Nobody thought he should have fought Steve Forbes, but he fought that fight against a former world champion, a guy everybody thought he would win. It was on HBO, and it led to a pay-per-view fight after that. Uh, but De La Hoya fought everybody. Alvarez is now going away from that battle plan, and he's just finding the 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 sweet spot where he who can he get away with that the commission will approve that the public will accept and and not not be at risk too much now i'm not calling alvarez afraid believe me i am not i think he's just looking at things and saying why should i take on this challenge if i don't have to and i understand uh why he's reticent to fight terence crawford i really do you know, Terrence Crawford, uh, last year, a month before Alvarez defeated Charlo, won the Undisputed Welterweight Championship. That was three division different from uh, where Canelo fought at 168. You're going from 147, 154, 160 up to 168. So I understand the reticence he has in fighting Terrence Crawford. However, Terrence Crawford is now a super welterweight world champion, and he defended his title against a super wel welterweight world champion in Jermel Charlo. And let me ask you this, and, and think of this, Canelo. If you watch this, think of this, right? Who would win a fight between Jermel Charlo and Terrence Crawford? I guarantee you that Terrence Crawford would win that fight. Terrence Crawford certainly would be a solid favorite in that fight. Um, it looked like that fight was going to happen at one point, but ask anybody who has any uh, knowledge of boxing, and I think they would tell you they think uh, uh, Terrence Crawford would defeat Jermel Charlo if they met right now. So why is it okay to fight Charlo and then it's not okay to fight Crawford. But the fight that I really want to see would be David Benavides. I think Benavides, who now holds an interim light heavyweight title, would be a great threat to Canelo. And, you know, Canelo would probably win the fight. Who knows? But it would be fun. There would be doubt going into the fight. It would be back and forth. It would be entertaining. There's a rivalry there. Um if he fights Bivol again, that would be good. Uh, Bivol was fighting in uh, um, Riyadh against uh, Artur Beterbiev in October for the Undisputed Light Heavyweight Championship. Now, if Beterbiev wins, I'm not expecting Alvarez to fight him. Uh, if Bivol wins, though, there might be a chance that that fight gets done. Um, but I'm just disappointed in the direction Alvarez has gone. You know, he performed okay. It was nothing great. You you know, I, I talked to a bunch of people who were at the fight last night. I was covering UFC and watched the Alvarez fight on pay-per-view after I got home. Uh, and shout out to pay-per-view.com for a great experience, by the way, uh, when you watch fights on their app. Um, it's just phenomenal. But anyways, um, 
And I asked a lot of people who were there what they thought. And the word that I got from so many of them was meh. You know, was it a good fight? Meh. You know, there wasn't a lot of excitement about the way Canelo performed in that fight. And that's too bad because he is one of the big stars and one of the great talents in boxing. And I think he can still make some unbelievable fights that are going to be talked about for years. But you have to give us those kind of matches. So Canelo Alvarez won. Congratulations, Canelo, on that. You're doing it your way. You got the win that you wanted. You got the big paycheck that you wanted. But just a piece of advice. Think of your fans next time. If you're going to fight an opponent of this level, make it accessible for your fans to get in. $300 for the cheapest ticket is not accessible. $100 for the pay-per-view price is not accessible. Make it something that people can afford if you're not going to take on the biggest challenge. If you take on the biggest challenge, if you're fighting the Better Be Of uh, Bivol winner, if you're fighting Better Be Of, if, uh, if you're fighting um, uh, uh, Benavides, excuse me, if you're fighting Terrence Crawford, great. Charge top dollar because those are top dollar fights. But don't do the same thing for these lesser fights. Congratulations once again to Canelo Alvarez, still the super middleweight champion of the world. I wish I was more excited about it, but hey, this is boxing, right? Have a good day and enjoy the fights, everybody.